Now section two will be about semiconductor applications. So how can we make that extraordinary behavior of semiconductors to use them in some electronic devices? We are going to study this in this section, section two. Here we are. We know that in conductors, especially for metals, charge carriers are electrons. Electrons are carrying electrical energy. And electrons are negatively charged particles. But in semiconductors, this is a little different. In semiconductors, charge carriers can be both negative, yani electrons, and both, and also positive. Positive charge carriers are called holes. Yani charge carriers in a semiconductor can be both positive and negative. You know what negative is. Electron is negative charge carrier, but also we have a positive charge carrier called holes. So what is hole? What does hole mean? Now let's see that. Normally we know that in a semiconductor, electrons are found in uh, electrons are found in valence bands. Conduction band is completely empty. But we can make electrons jumping from valence band to the conduction band by heating. When we heat them, they gain enough energy because band gap was not so large in semiconductor. It was one electron volt. One electron volt energy can be easily given to these electrons. You can make them jumping from the valence band to the conduction band. But when one electron jumps from valence band to the conduction band, its space, its place becomes empty. This empty space is called the hole. Then when an electron jumps from valence band to the conduction band, its space becomes empty, leaves an empty space when it jumps, or hole in the valence band. Repeating again, electron jumping into conduction band from valence band leaves an empty space. This empty space is called a hole. Okay, we got what hole is, but why hole is assumed to be positive? Now let's get it. When there becomes an empty space, other electrons jumping from their place to that place. Yeah, this electron jumps from here to there. Another valence electron moves into this hole. But as it is moving into this hole, by leaving a hole at its former location, and its own place becomes a hole. Now check it. Electron is jumping from left to right, but hole is moving from right to left. Are they moving in opposite directions? Yes. Which charge is moving in opposite direction? Negative and positive. If electrons are negatively charged particles, since they are moving to the right, holes must be towards positive. Why? Because they are moving in the opposite direction of electrons. So, when an electron jumps from here to there, hole moves from here to there. Because of the direction of motion are opposite, then we think that, we consider that, holes are positively charged particles. Holes are viewed migrating, you know, what does migrating mean? Moving in the direction opposite the motion of electrons. That's why holes are considered to be positive. Yeah, holes are positive, but the electrons are negative. And then, electrons contribute conductivity. Of course, which electrons? The electrons which jumped to the conduction band. Because in semiconductors, normal electrons are found in where? Valence band. But when you hit them, they jump to the conduction band, and then they provide, contribute conductivity. When you hit a semiconductor, the electrons jump from the valence band to the conduction band. Of course, of course, when they jump, they leave a hole. Another electron jumps from uh, valence conduction, another hole. Third, third. And this electron starts moving in conduction band in the opposite direction of the electric field. We learned this before. Electric electrons always move, not all the electrons, negative charge move, particles move in the opposite direction of electric field. So electric field in this diagram is from left to right. As you see, holes, electrons are moving from right to left, but where? 
in conduction band. Electrons just starts moving in conduction band. But holes are migrating which band? Valence band. Holes contribute conductivity by migrating in valence band. And what about their direction of motion? The same as electric field. Why? Because they are assumed to be positive. And all positive charge particles move in the same direction of electric field. Holes contribute conductivity by migrating in the valence band in the same direction of electric field. And such questions can be asked in history. Yani what is the direction of the uh, electron or holes? It is in the same direction of the electric field, in the opposite direction of the electric. Where are they moving? So such questions can be asked. So holes are moving or are migrating in valence bands. They are in the same direction, moving in the same direction of the electric field. But electrons are migrating in conduction band in the opposite direction of electric field. Until now it's okay? Everything is okay? Now, we will go a little detailed about the semiconductors. The first way to increase the conductivity of the semiconductor is terminal excitation. In fact, I explained that. Then you are going to heat semiconductor. Terminal excitation means that. Heat them. When we heat them, what's happening? Normally, there's a band gap, which is one electron volt. When you heat a semiconductor, so the electrons in the balance band start to jump from balance band to the conduction band, just you see and here. One electron jumped, so in balance band, one holes form. Another electron jump, a holes form. Third electron, fourth electron, so they start jumping to the conduction band while they are leaving holes in the balance band. But after each jump, one hole is produced. Yeah, the number of electrons and holes are equal. equal. So number of electrons jumping into the conduction band will be equal to number of holes left in the balance band. And there are an equal number of conduction electrons and holes in these types of cell materials. Equal number of conduction electrons and holes in this semiconductor material. This is called whole, whole uh, electron pair. Electron hole pair. Because if there is one electron formed in conduction band, one hole is formed in the valence band. Called electron hole pair, electron hole pair. So such semiconductors that contains electron hole pairs is called intrinsic semiconductors. Intrinsic, pure. Pure semiconductors. Intri intrinsic semiconductor, pure. Pure semiconductor. Silicon is one of them, one element. Germanium is another one. These are intrinsic semiconductors. And conductivity is provided by electron hole pairs. Conductivity is provided by electron hole pairs. How? Electrons are vibrate, uh, migrating in conduction band in the opposite direction of the electric current, electric field, but holes are migrating in valence band in the same direction of electric field. That's why conductivity is provided in intrinsic semiconductor by the means of electron hole pairs. This is first method. In fact, we studied this before. We talked about this before. I will detail this study right now. Is it the number of the electron Of course, it's called the number of holes. Are called electron hole pairs? Yes, because okay. when one electron jumps, okay. one hole forms. Another electron, another hole forms. That's why the number of electrons and holes are equal. This is called electron hole pair. And conductivity is provided by electron hole pairs, which electrons are migrating in conduction band, but holes are migrating in balance band. Okay? We got the first type of the method of excitation. How can we convert a semiconductor to conductor, heat them, and how conductivity is provided? But this is not the only way. There is one more method to provide conductivity for a semiconductor. Now coming the second method. Doping. Doping. <laughs> <laughs> yes, doping. So, a second way to increase the conductivity of a semiconductor is to add foreign atoms into the structure of the semiconductor. These added foreign atoms are called impurities and Shifting a semiconductor to a conductor 
by adding foreign atoms, yani impurities in the structure, this process is called doping. Yani you are converting semiconductor to a conductor. So, adding foreign atoms in the structure of semiconductor, yani which are called impurities, makes a very big effect on conductivity. Only a few added impurity atom, foreign atom, into the structure of semiconductor. About one part in one million. Yani inside one million silicon atoms, you will add just one single impurity atom, and it will make a very big change in conductivity. So it has a large effect on the semiconductors, resistors, and conductivity. Uh, but if you use more than one impurity, it's okay. Instead of one atom, use two atoms or two atoms or add as many as many atoms as possible. Yani increase the doping level. Increase the doping level by using more impurity atoms. As doping level increases, conductivity also increases. And then, if impurities are provided, I mean, conductivity is provided by impurities. Yani yeah, impurity dominates the conduction. This material is called extrinsic semiconductor because this semiconductor is not pure anymore. It is not pure. Conductivity is provided by an, an extra electron atom coming from outside. That's why we say that it's not pure anymore. It's named as extrinsic semiconductors. But there are two types of topics. There are two types of topics. Types of topics. One of them is, ready? By adding impurity atoms such as arsenic, which has five valence electrons. We are going to use a foreign atom whose valence electrons are five. Why did we use this? Well, look at the structure of silicon atom. This is the silicon is a intrinsic semiconductor itself. And silicon atom or germanium all have four outermost electrons, four valence electrons. All four electrons are used for making bonds. Look at them. This is one of the silicon atom. One, two, three, four valence electrons. Each electron makes a bond with other electron. You see that. No free electrons. But when we insert into the structure a, a, a arsenic impurity atom, whose valence electron is five, this is the different color. You see that? This is arsenic. Arsenic has five outermost electrons, five valence electrons. Four of them is used for making bonds. One, two, three, four. But one electron is free. This free electron will provide conductivity. So, by any impurity atoms such as arsenic, which have five valence electrons, four valence electrons from these five will be used for making bonds, but the fifth electron is free to move and provides conductivity. Because uh, we add it, we provide conductivity by electron, we say that this semiconductor is doped with mobile electrons. Because electrons are mobile, they are moving, they provide conductivity. And we know that electrons are negatively charged particles. First letter of electron negative is N. That's why these types of semiconductors are called n type semiconductor. Conductivity is provided by electrons. Electrons are negatively charged particles. First letter of the negative is N. These types of semiconductors are called n type semiconductors. Then tell me, what is the charge carrier in n type semiconductor? Electron. <laughs> Electron is the charge carrier for anti semiconductor Normally, silicon or germanium have no free electrons. Silic silicon or germanium, yeah, the semiconductor at normal conditions, they don't have free electrons. And by adding arsenic into the structure, we are giving this solid a free electron. We are donating an electron into the structure. You know what does donate mean? Yes. Give them. So one electron is donated to the solid by the arsenic atom. That's why arsenic atom is named as donor atom. Donor. 
Yes. Which is, did you like the text? Yes. Well? yes. And you don't have And also, <laughs> there must be a slight change in the band structure of this semiconductor as well. Because normally, semiconductor cannot provide conductivity if you don't hit that. But now, we provided the conductivity. So, so we should be able to explain this in terms of band structure as well. And we will. Band structure of any type semiconductor. This extra electron. Extra electron occupies an energy level, which is called donor, donor level, because it's because of the donor atom, lies just below the conduction band. Conduction band, valence band, we know separation between them is one electron volt. It is huge if you don't hit it, so no conductivity. But when you insert this arsenic atom into the structure, the fifth electron provides an energy level just below the conduction band. Then this electron from this donor level jumps to the conduction band and conductivity starts. Yeah, these free electrons are jumping from this donor level. Yes, they can jump. Why? Because separation between them is not that big. How much? Or oh, we know five. And line a very small potential difference is enough for these electrons to jump from donor level to the conduction band. And we know that electrons are always providing conductivity where? In which band? Of course, in the conduction bands. This is the band structure of an anti-type semiconductor. This is anti semiconductor. Teacher, yeah. these electrons jump from the balance to the donor or they were They cannot jump from balance to the no. There is these there electrons the those yeah. electrons which are bound to the, each other are in the valence band. Which are making the bonds. They are in valence band. But that free electron, one electron was free, remember? Its energy level is donor level. It's just below the conduction band. So they the, jump from the, this uh, donor level to the conduction band. So these are the free electrons yes, 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 the donor level. Yes, free electrons. A small energy is needed to move this mobile electron from this donor level to conduction band. When electron moves to the conduction band, conductivity starts. And type semiconductor, this is all. But there is one more type of semiconductor. Second method, again, that topic, second type of topping, by adding impurity atoms such as indium or aluminium. But these have three valence electrons. When we add them into the structure, you can predict what will happen. So, position of the fourth electron will stay empty. Yani? Home. Correct. So, this is the structure of the silicon atom. You know that there are four outer shell electrons, which is valence electrons. But when we insert an indium atom, these three electrons, because it has three valence electrons, two of them is used for making bonds. But location of the fourth electron will stay empty. So, three valence electrons will be used for making bond. But the position of the fourth electron remains empty. That empty space is called a hole. Then we say that this hole is ready to accept electrons from the solid. Yeah, an electron from this solid can jump from here to there. By the time holes comes in here. Another electron from the solid can jump from here to there. And then holes goes in here. Another electron can jump, and then hole goes in here. So these, are these uh, impurity atom now accepting electrons from the solid. That's why it's called acceptor atom. Then this aluminum and indium now called acceptor atom because they accept electron from the solid, from semiconductor structure. One electron is accepted from the solid by the indium atom or the aluminum atom. That's why this atom is called acceptor atom. And because in valence band, the holes are migrating, this conductivity is provided by holes, 
we say that this semiconductor is doped with mobile holes. And holes are assumed to be positive with charged particles. First letter of the positive is P. This is why this semiconductor is named as P time semiconductor. Teacher, yes. the green one accepts electrons. This empty, yeah, 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 this one, green one, because there is a hole. Hole accepts electrons. So, teacher, whenever it accepts an electron, it leaves the other place a hole. Again, a hole. Okay, so another that hole again accepts another electron okay. hole, and this way, this way, holes are starting to migrate in the valence band. So, teacher, the electrons are mobile. Electrons. But mobile, little electrons are provided by the hole. Okay. With no holes. So that's why everything started with the hole. Okay. So this is called P type semiconductor. Of course, energy level diagram must be a little change again, but you can predict what's going to happen. This time, hole's position is used for taking electrons from the valence band. Yani, there will be an acceptor level just above the valence band. Like this. The hole occupies energy level, or called acceptor level, just above the valence band in here. Normally, hole is full empty. There is nothing. But electrons are starting to jump. Electrons in the valence band starting to jump these holes. And then they provide conduction. Yeah, you can think this way. You somehow, somehow, take this conduction band in here, and otherwise normal electrons cannot jump from balance to the conduction band because energy gap is so huge. Yeah, you are forming an alternative conduction band by making a hole in the stretch. Yeah, this don't accept the level trades just like I don't say I say just like a conduction band, but in fact it's not conduction band. Conduction band in here, but when we insert this hole. Electrons, instead of jumping in here, electrons are starting to jump to the acceptor level, which is a kind of conduction band. It is provided by the hole. Of course, yes. A hole provides this. A hole occupies an energy level, which is called acceptor level, just lies above the valence band, and then electrons are easily jump from this valence band to this acceptor level and conductivity starts. A small energy Ea, it's also been small, 0 0.05, 0 0.05 electron volt, is needed to move an electron in valence band to the acceptor level. So the teacher, the acceptor level acts as a conductor? Yeah, we can say that, acts just like a conduction, you can say that.